How's it going guys? Andrew here with Justified EDC. Got a little bit of a different video here today. I'm um, going to do a multi-knife review. Um, so these are these are all knives that either um, I didn't want to do full testing on or couldn't do full testing on or carry or whatever. Um, but I still wanted to get videos out on, give you guys a little bit of information, kind of do like a mini review slash overview of each of these. Um, and kind of give each of them a little bit of a spotlight before getting them back to their respective owners. Um, this one is on loan from the maker. These two are uh, on loan from, uh, this one is from a viewer, this is from a friend. Uh, this one is mine, but it's actually getting traded soon. Uh, but I wanted to get um, a video out on it before I sent it off. So we're going to hop right into it and we're going to start with this guy, which I was not familiar with until uh, someone volunteered to send it to me. So this is the Axial Knives Alpine. Um, I had never heard of Axial Knives. Let's see if I can get this to focus here. I'm having trouble getting my camera to focus here. Um, I had never heard of this company before. Uh, from what I understand from looking at it, they are one of those OEM companies. Uh, this is OEM by uh, someone in China. I'm, I'm not really sure who it is, whether it's one of the really well-known ones or not, but uh, this is OEM'd, and uh, it's a cool knife with a couple fatal flaws, in my opinion. Um, so just really quick going over specs here. I'm going to line this guy up for you. you got about a three and a half inch blade, about seven inches overall. So your grip area is about one, two, three and a half inches. Um, you have a eighth inch thick blade stock. Your blade is going to be S35VN. You got micarta handles on here. And I'm not sure if it's coming across on video, but this is actually a white Cerakote on the blade. So the whole thing is white Cerakoted as well as the hardware to match, which is pretty neat. And this is a uh, really nice, uh, this looks like American Micarta, which is always good to see. It's got some good texture. It's not too polished, uh, but I like it quite a bit. Um, the, the the Micarta and the, uh, the just the aesthetics of this are kind of my favorite part about it. Uh, getting into actual use, though, then, um, it kind of falls short, and I'll tell you why. Uh, the handle is a little bit short, um, at least for me. So, so for me to get a full grip, I got to get right up here behind the edge, and I'm just kind of getting a full grip there. But because of how the heel of the blade is right there, um, your finger is dangerously close to the edge. I actually cut my finger on this knife, <laughs> getting it out of the sheath right before this review and kind of uh, holding it in a couple different grips. Um, it's just kind of off. Like I said, the guy that sent this to me had a lanyard on it, and it does help if you kind of choke back with the lanyard to, to use it, but then you're kind of far from the edge, and you're only getting like a three-finger grip on what could be a four-finger gripped um, handle. So what I would have liked to see is maybe like a bigger uh, choil here, just to give you a little bit more space away from the edge, or just make the handle... Uh, a little bit longer, maybe flare out this uh, the top of the handle here to give you more of a guard. I, I, I don't know, but it, I would not be comfortable using this uh, long term just because you have to get so close to the edge and because the handle's so short. Other than that, it's fairly comfortable. Um, I like the design of the knife. You got just a nice drop point shape. It almost, it's like the most subtle harpoon you've ever seen. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get this to focus here. It does not want to. Um, but you kind of have a clipped tip, but it does gradually go down. So I'd call that a drop point. It comes down to a decently thin edge. It did come very sharp. Uh, I don't think the original owner had a lot of use on it, but, um, and then the sheath is okay. Um, again, it's not huge or anything. I would prefer to see like a fold over style, get rid of the side of the rivets, uh, just to make it a little more slim. Um, and then it came with this kind of like knockoff tip mini tech lock which it works all right but you can add whatever attachment you'd want to on here uh the sheath retention is really light um i'm not even going to try to shake it out under camera uh, but i would not want to carry this in any kind of uh vertical with the handle down i'd be afraid of the the sheath uh the knife coming out of the sheath um then that's an easy thing that you could fix if you got this knife and liked it you could easily heat this up here and increase the retention but another thing with like grabbing it out of the sheath is either you have to uh get your finger here and then you come out and you're away from that edge but you don't really have the best grip on the knife or you can kind of do what i do with she's like this and kind of put my finger up here on the ledge and pull it out and kind of just let your hand lay where it would naturally but because you're so close to that edge i worry about drawing out of the sheath and cutting myself so 
I don't know. I think this knife needs to go back to the drawing table a little bit. I think they have a good idea going here. Um, and with some modifications, it could be a really nice knife. Um, but just not really, uh, not really my thing. Um, now the nice part about this is it's only coming in at about 130 bucks. I think they're on sale right now for a little bit less than that. So for my, nice micarta S35 VN, I don't know what the heat treat is like on this. Again, I didn't use it a whole lot. I didn't want to mess it up for uh, the guy I'm sending this back to, but, um, yeah, I think it could be a good value if you really like the knife, maybe if you have small hands. Um, but yeah, not really my thing. Uh, so moving on here. This one, and I apologize to Doughboy Blades. They sent me this a while back, and I just have not gotten to do a review yet. Uh, but this is their mini beekeeper model. Uh, it is in, uh, well, let me see, I'm looking at my notes here. I got my notes here off to the side, um, just because this is a lot of specs to remember. But let's get your size off here. So you got about three inches of cutting edge with about three and a half of, oh, Man, we're having a lot of problems focusing today. About three and a half of actual blade, and then, yeah, about three inches of cutting edge. And then your grip area is about one, two, three and a half inches, maybe a little bit more. Um, but you can get a full grip on it. Uh, these G10 scales are nicely... Um, man, I'm really having focus issues today. I don't know if it's the lighting or what, but you have these nice to scalloped stone pattern G10 handles. Nice Cerakote on the blade. Uh, just... Uh, an FYI for you guys, this was a blem that he was able to send me faster than getting me out uh, a perfect model. But the only blem is this little Cerakote mark here, uh, so not a big deal. I do actually really do love his logo. Um, he ended up sending me some stickers and swag and stuff like that, so that was pretty cool. Uh, but you've got uh, kind of an interesting blade stock thickness on this. Uh, my measurement came on this with my calipers at 0.14, um, which is just over an eighth of an inch. Um, it doesn't come out to any kind of like fractional standard size. It's like, I think it was like seven fiftieths or something, if I'm remembering correctly. So I'm not really sure what the intention was behind that, but, um, it, it certainly works fine. It's got a nice flat grind on it. It doesn't come down to a very thin edge, but then you have this really, uh, nice secondary bevel on here. And this actually does slice very well. I did some cardboard cutting with this and genuinely expected it to be kind of a pain in the ass but it came out very nice uh the just the, it goes to show that you can have a little bit thicker of an edge as long as you get that primary bevel at the right angle uh and polish it up nice so um it does cut fairly well but if you wanted to use this kind of like a field knife you could definitely beat on this as well uh this is made out of 80 crv2 which is pretty tough stuff um, and with the Cerakote on that, you're not going to worry about rusting or anything like that. ADC CRV2 is like a semi-stainless from what I have experienced. Um, these come in at like 260, and they come with a standard fold-over sheath, but these have like a Cordura overwrap, which is pretty cool. This one's in, it looks like Multicam. I don't think it's Multicam Air, I think it's this regular Multicam. Um, and then he does this kind of uh, long, discrete carry concepts clip with this wrap around it to kind of keep it center line. Um, which is fine. It works. It's it's pretty steady, but I'm, I wouldn't necessarily want to send out a product tied off with paracord like that. Um, I'd probably find another mounting option, but it, it, it does work. Um, the retention on the sheath is very good, easy to pop in and out, clicks in very nicely. Um, I'm just happy to see someone using discrete carry concepts clips. You could easily put this inside the waistband. Um, Obviously, I'd love to see all of these knives with something like a deep carry ambi sheath from Offensive or someone else, but um, the sheath does function very well, has a nice pop to it, um, and I did enjoy using this for for the, the use that I did put behind it. It feels very nice in hand. You can do all of your standard grips with it because it's neutral enough. Yeah, just a, just a cool little uh, knife, and I do like a lot of his other models as well, so definitely a uh, maker to keep an eye on. They're doing good work. And they actually just came out with a, or I think it's releasing soon, uh, a friction folder design with 3D printed handles, which is really neat. So uh, if you guys know anything about me, I'm into 3D printing. So Next knife here is the Yuka Enigma. Uh, this is a knife I've had my eye on for a while, just kind of Yuka Blade Works in general. Um, oh, and I should have made this, I uh, should have uh, specified this is USA made, uh, handmade as well. So this one was Chinese OEM, this one was USA handmade, this one is also USA handmade. Um, you have a, from what I could gather, this is 3V, I couldn't find, again, this was sent in from a viewer, 
um, so I don't have maker specs or anything on it, but all the other Enigmas that I've seen have been in 3V, which is a great, uh, super tough steel. You got like an acid stone wash on the blade, came very, very sharp. You got these micarta handles that come down to a, a very n a nice polish. It does feel good in hand. Um, for a defensive blade, I wouldn't really want to see it polished up this much. I'd rather it be a little more coarse, uh, have a little more texture, but it is what it is. It is very nicely finished. Uh, like I said, it comes down to a nice thin uh, grind, nice acute point. This is going to pierce exceedingly well, and it does cut very well. Uh, a little smaller of a micro bevel than I'd uh, prefer. Um, I'd like to see that uh, that micro bevel uh, or secondary bevel, whatever you want to call it, uh, brought up a little bit. Uh, probably just increase your cutting performance a little bit. The thing that I, I'm struggling to understand on this knife is the handle. Uh, this is kind of based on those like Scottish dirks. And the Scottish Dirk has inspired a lot of other knives, um, uh, like the Tracker Dan stuff uh, was originally based on the Cold Steel uh, Cooladin, which is based off of Scottish Dirk, and then that has inspired lots of other blades since. So that's kind of what I, I think they're going for here. Um, but some of the cutouts just don't make a whole lot of sense to me. Like, I think if you're going for this kind of vibe, why not just make it fully um, ambidextrous? Because right now, the really the only grip that is comfortable in my hands is the reverse grip edge out. Um, because you have this choil here, you have the flared pommel. That's really the only grip that feels super comfortable without hot spots. Even in your standard like hammer grip, these uh, points here on the pommel kind of dig into your hand, which isn't the most comfortable thing in the world. And then when you go to like reverse grip edge in you don't have that index point on this side anymore, and now these are digging into your hand. So, I mean, it works in a pinch. You can absolutely use this in any of those grips. It's just not the most comfortable. And I think if you're gonna have a design based off of something uh, that is fully ambidextrous, why not just keep it like that? Because I can't even really do a saber grip in this, because then you have back here in the palm swell, you have that, uh, well, the, the, the palm swell is actually nice, but back here at the pommel, those points again are kind of digging into your hands when you do that kind of saber grip. So, and he, yeah, I, I just, I don't, I don't understand it. Um, if it was designed only for reverse grip edge out, it does that very well. Um, so I don't want to knock it for that by any means. And it is a very nicely finished blade. And I've see, only heard good things about his other models as well. But I just think it would have been better if they had just left it a completely neutral handle, like either put another choil in over here, maybe not have this flared out so much, or just kind of have this kind of come in here and then just flare into an hourglass shape here. Um, I think that would have been a much better decision, made this blade a little bit more useful for multiple things. Um, but hey, it might work for you. It might just be my hand size. Sheath is very nice. Again, the retention is a little bit lighter than I would want to, but if this was my knife, I could easily heat this up and change that. Comes with a discrete carry concepts clip, which is great to see. Um, the sheath isn't too much bigger than it needs to be. You have multiple uh, mounting options for other hardware, so that's a good thing. Uh, and I, I'm a sucker for this like Raptor uh, pattern Kydex, like the faux leather, especially this red. I've had offensive uh, make me a bunch of stuff in this uh, color pattern a couple of years back. But so sheath is nice. It works. It would be really great inside the waistband. Um, like if you wanted to set this over here on, on your uh, weak side, um, this would be a great option for that. But again, I really only think this is the grip that you'd want to be using this in. So take that for what you will. It's a very nice knife. It might just not be for me. Lastly then, this is the Tijuana Coin Hitchhiker. Oh, and if I didn't mention on this one, uh, you have you also have an eighth inch uh, thick blade stock on this as well. And the price was coming in, I believe around like 270. The Peel Ply G10 versions of this knife on his website are going for like 270. But again, I didn't buy this, so I don't know how much was uh, spent on this. And I think the other guy got it in a trade if I remember correctly. So uh, your mileage may, may vary, but it's around the 250 to $300 mark. So then moving on here, this is the Tijuana Coin Hitchhiker, uh, specifically the reverse edge hitchhiker. So it's ground. He makes a, a model that has a um, more standard grind here well, where your edge is on the front, but this is uh, ground for reverse edge. So you have your bevel on the back here. You have a very fine micro bevel on there. 
Um, my car to handles, this is also made of ADC RV2. He does some stuff in 01 as well. Um, so you will have to uh, just make sure this isn't going to rust too much on you, but uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, this is very comfortable. Uh, again, really only designed for your reverse grip stuff. So reverse grip uh, or forward. Uh, sorry, I'm going to start over with that sentence. <laughs> it's really only meant for edge in stuff. So forward grip edge in is very comfortable. Reverse grip edge in is very comfortable as well. Uh, you can use this as uh, more utility stuff. You can kind of do your... Uh, your standard grips here. It's not too uncomfortable. Uh, it's a little awkward with this toilet here, but you can do it, and I have done it uh, to cut some stuff, so it's not too bad. And then, but like reverse grip edge out, you wouldn't really want to do with this knife. Uh, one thing I really enjoy on this is the tip orientation. So again, I'm going to do that thing where I line up the line up the handle, and you can see if I can get this to focus here, is that your tip is oriented above the center line, which is awesome. So when you're using this like that. It's actually pointed up a little bit, but still straight at your target. So you're definitely going to hit with that point and give you more power to rip backwards. Um, so I really enjoy that about this knife. Um, the handles came with a very high polish, which I did not like. I don't think defensive use knives should have polished handles. They should have texture. They should be grippy. They should, if they're going to be G10, like peel ply or whatever, they should borderline be abrasive on your hands. Micarta should be textured so that when your hands get sweaty or wet, it grips your hand. Um, so I left the, the bottoms of, uh, of this handle here right at the tip of the pommel. I'm not sure it's going to show up real well, but that's the kind of polish it came with. And then I just took some uh, 80 grit sandpaper and sanded this down so you had more uh, texture on it. But um, yeah, my card handles, brass pins. This is also eighth inch blade stock, come, full flat grind, comes down to a decently thin edge. Um, again, ADC RV2 is very tough steel, so it should hold up for you. Um, I'm pretty sure these have gone to organic medium classes. Uh, and then this one in particular, it came with a, just a standard like fold over uh, Kydex sheath, but um, the retention was okay, but it was really rubbing on the blade, and I think it was rubbing on the edge when you would pull it out. So I sent this off and had Offensive Industries make a deep carry pocket sheath for it, which I much more enjoyed carrying this like that. Before, when I had the standard sheath, I was kind of carrying it on my left side, uh, on my weak side horizontally on my belt, uh, but I much more enjoy carrying this in the pocket. So this is a nice slim package. Um, it draws very easily, very naturally. Uh, it's just a nasty little blade. I very much do enjoy this, but uh, life has to move on. And when funds are tight, you got to trade to get more knives to review. So that's where this one's going. So I'm going to pull these all back out here, guys. Again, uh, I hope you enjoyed this kind of shorter form, kind of quick reviews. Um, if you like this style and want to see more of this, let me know. Um, and I this will actually uh, be much more helpful for me to... Uh, get reviews out faster um, for stuff that I really enjoy and really want to put a lot of use behind. I can do the longer form reviews, but then stuff like this, I can not waste your time with a 30 minute video on one knife telling you why I don't like it or why it's going to move on for me. Um, but I can still get the information out there and show you off some cool makers. All of these makers here, again, I don't, I'm not as familiar with Axial, but all of these other makers here are really fantastic people. Um, again, very big thanks to Dual Boy Blades for sending this over. Uh, thank you to my viewers for sending these in. Um, so, uh, not throwing any shade at anyone, just giving my, my two cents, kind of giving you guys a heads up so you don't buy it and run into the same issues that I have. Um, so if you enjoyed this, guys, uh, shoot me a comment down in the, uh, in the comment section. Uh, tell me what you want to see in the future. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video.